Yes, Jesus. And be popular in hell. In the name of Jesus. As we popular in heaven. In the name of this Jesus. This year for Jesus. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap your hands and appreciate God. Choir, you may have a seat. The Lord bless you. God bless you. But let's open our Bibles in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. We are starting from the 17th verse. Ephesians chapter 1 from the 17th verse. The Bible says, actually let's start from verses 15. Start from verses 15. Ephesians 1, 15. The Bible says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the righteous of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at all or at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church mm, which is his body and the fullness of him that filleth all in all hallelujah praise the lord god bless something very brief upon my heart called greatness somebody say greatness uh patterns of greatness what are the patterns of greatness um what is greatness the topic is patterns of greatness hallelujah Ephesians gave us a whole story, Ephesians 1, 16 up to around 20, telling us about God, how Christ gave us greatness through him, through him the church, and we are the church, we whom he called, we whom he predestined, we whom he chose, praise the Lord, and he gave us that which that belongeth to the kingdom, and that is greatness. So what is greatness? What are the patterns of greatness? When we say somebody is great, when we say I want to live a great life, this year I want to flow in greatness. What are the patterns of greatness? Hallelujah. Last Sunday, I, 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 one of my daughters, Alice, who came, the leaders and the ministers who are here, I remember what she said. She reminded me of one of the miracles that I had forgotten in my life that ever happened in my hand like this. We were very young. I just joined the university. And I remember I was taking people to, to Busia. You people remember what she said, right? Those of you who are here. We went to Busia for a crusade. Alice was not born again. She went to the crusade because of her friend. Her friend told her, let's go tour. They went to tour Busia. Praise the Lord. So she sat in the bus and we all went. But the first day of the crusade, something happened that I had forgotten. This is way back, very many years ago. I had totally forgotten. Then a lady came with a dead child. The kid was dead. The kid, I think it was about five years or seven years. Remember, we have been telling people, come, bring the lamb, bring the sick. Bring the dead, bring hallelujah. So they brought the, the first thing that happened was a dead child. So it was me, Papa John, Papa, Papa John, Papa Moses, who are three of us. Now <laughs> they stopped the crusade, they stopped the praise and worship, they brought the thing on top of the pulpit like this. The lady is crying. If your God can bring our child back to life, then I'll get saved. I remember. She said, then I'll get saved. We laid hands on this child. Papa John got the leg. 
Papa Moses got the head, me I got the heart. Huh? We started pressing. Come back! Come back! Come back! We saw the kid. Back to life. Alice reminded me of that thing. Since then, Alice gave her life to Christ. Remember, the lady who had gone to just tour Busia, she gave her life to Christ. I had forgotten about that in my life. Hallelujah. So, greatness. <laughs> greatness doesn't matter. Whatever comes in your life, everything that may come, it doesn't come because it has come to challenge you. But it has come so that greatness may be made manifest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the greatness of Christ that we are talking about can do anything, anything. When we call that name Jesus, and because that name is inside of us, so we are able to manifest, we are able to do anything in that name. And that is greatness. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I want to give us the patterns of greatness. Number one, the pattern of greatness. Number one, create a vision. Somebody say create a vision. Create a vision. Can we speak together? Uh -huh. Create a vision. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2. Let's open there. Run there very fast. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2. Habakkuk 2. Verse mm. 2 says, mm. and the Lord answered me mm. and said, mm. write the vision mm. and make it plain mm. upon tables mm. so he may run mm. that reads it mm. for the vision is yet for an appointed, appointed time. Appointed time. Mm. At the end, yes. it shall speak mm. and not lie. Mm. Though it tarries, mm. wait for it. Because it will surely come. Mm. It will not delay. Amen. You can stop there. Hallelujah. Amen. Abba Kuk is here telling us, for us to be great, we need to have a vision. Praise the Lord. Number one, create a vision in your life. So that greatness will come upon your life. Don't be like them that don't have visions. If you are to be great, every man and woman of God on earth now, whether born again or not born again, if you ask them what has made you who you are now, they will tell you, I had a vision for this. Praise the Lord. Amen. They will tell you, I saw myself doing this way back. I saw myself being a billionaire and I wrote it down. I saw myself being a multi businessman and I wrote it down. Hallelujah. Abakuk tells us, write it down though it may tarry, though it may take long, but surely at appointed time of God, it will come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, write a vision. Write a vision. So patterns of greatness. If you are to be great in your family, if you are to be remembered in your life that so and so touched a generation, so and so touched a family, you touched your clanmates, you must have your own vision. Don't stand and walk in people's vision. No, that is not okay. If you move in people's visions, that means you can either be led astray. Yes, we can move in a, maybe probably an organizational visions. That one is different. Maybe the church vision. That one is different. Maybe your job where you work from, they have their own vision. That is different. But I'm talking about individual vision. What is that that you want to be in life? What is that that you want to do in life? Do you want to remain the same year, same year, same year, same person? That is why I'm telling you, write a vision. Create something that you need to be. And see yourself that you are there already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm writing a vision. I'm creating a vision for my greatness. If we are to be great in life, Things don't just come like that. 
You must first of all visualize it. Hallelujah. You must see it. See it with your eyes and see it with the inner spiritual eyes. Now write it down. Whether it may take long, it may take one year, two years, three years. But I want to assure you that one day, one day, it shall come to pass. Don't hate people who are succeeding. What you need to do, go and look for them. Find out what is making them succeed. Hallelujah. And the moment you have seen what is making them succeed, lay hold on it, lambano it, and make sure you know. Don't let it go. <laughs> Don't make it depart and start visualizing yourself. And you talk about yourself and say, I go, I'm going to be better than you. I'm going to be better than you. Just a moment of time. The second one. The pattern of greatness. Huh? Turn your adversity into advantage. Someone said, turning my adversity into my advantage. If we are to see greatness, turn every adversity in your life. 2 Corinthians 4 8. 2 Corinthians 4 8. We go there very fast. If you're there, say amen. Uh -huh. It says, we are troubled on every side. Yes. Yet not distressed. Uh -huh. We are perplexed. Uh -huh. But not in despair. Uh -huh. Persecuted. Persecuted. But not forsaken. Base. Cast down. Yes. But not destroyed. Not destroyed. Always stop bearing. there. First stop there. Hallelujah. We are troubled on every side. That means adversaries have come on every side. Challenges come. Perplexions have come. People have talked about us. People have gossiped about us. But we shall not look upon that adversary. We refuse to look upon it. But rather, we shall look and take it as advantage for us. Amen. That's what Paul was telling people. Continue, continue, continue. Always bearing yes. about the body... The dying of the Lord Jesus. Uh. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That, that, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. That is it. Stop there, my brother. Clap your hands for the evangelist. Uh, hallelujah. Take every adversary as an advantage for you to see greatness. Why? Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. God may refuse you to get a certain job for your advantage. Do you believe it with me? God may refuse you to enter, enter a certain relationship for your advantage. Do you believe it with me? Huh? So every adversary is and not for you to put you down. But whatever adversary that has come, take it as an advantage for you to achieve the next level in life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever challenges that come your way, use it as an advantage. Moses needed a Red Sea for the children of Israel to cross over. David needed Goliath for him to be king over Israel. Huh? Elijah came and worsened it. He said, now today let us solve this thing together. Bring all the prophets, you prophets of Baal. Carry whatever you can bring here. Huh? Let us see today. Today, let us, today we finish this matter once and for all. Bring water. Pour it on there. We shall see. Uh, <laughs> the Bible said Elijah laughed at them even they were pouring water they poured they came they were calling for their God for, uh, Elijah even said is your God slumbering Elijah after all these people were all tired he just called that God he said my God my God show yourself to these people to death by fire immediately so you need some adversaries to prove that you serve a living God Every man and woman of God who has reached a certain level in life, they have passed challenges. God wants you to see him in that challenge more than yourself. And the moment you put your focus onto God, trust me, you can never fail. You can never fail. You can never fail. Hallelujah. 
Joshua comes and tells, wasn't it Joshua who stopped the sun? Huh? In the valley of Ajalon. He stopped the sun. He told the sun, son, stop until I finish and slay these enemies of God. Because you understand your God, I prophesy. Because you understand your God. Whatever you shall speak shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So every adversary that comes, it doesn't come to kill us, but it comes to take us to the next level. Cultivate a champion's mindset. Have a champion's mindset. Mark chapter 9 verses 23. Romans chapter 8 verses 6. Romans chapter 12 verses 2. If you're there, you open and say amen. Mark 9.23 says, mm. Jesus said unto him, mm. if you can believe, mm. all things are possible to him that believes. Amen. If amen. you can believe, all things are possible. In other words, if your mind is a champion mindset, all things are? Let's open Romans 12 verses 2. The Bible says, and do not, com do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that I may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Having a champion mindset is when your mind is all renewed. When you're not focusing in negativity, you're not focusing in failures, you're not focusing in how someone else did and could not make it your mind is so new that you know nothing that is impossible you only know that everything is possible for you to achieve greatness praise the lord when someone else tried and failed that's not yours when someone else tried to do and couldn't make it, that's not your portion. Your portion is positivity. Your portion is when you start it, it cannot fail. Ah, when you start it, it cannot. What people say it's hard, go for it. Huh? For you to achieve greatness. So, for us to acquire greatness, we need a champion mindset. When you enter battle, you know you've already won it. That is what we mean, a champion. Fourthly, mm -hmm, I think this one, we've already talked something briefly about it. That is uh, practicing positive habits. Positive habits. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8, you open. Uh, Proverbs chapter, 12, chapter 17, verses 22. Positive habits is what I've been telling you. And habit, when they say you have a bad habit... That means there's something continuously that happens that you usually do. Amen? That is not good. But for you to achieve greatness, you should have a positive habit. You don't look poor. Praise the Lord. You may not have the money, but you refuse to look poor. That is an habit. When you're sick in your body, you refuse to call yourself sick. That is an habit. Praise the Lord. When you see things not happening, you really see it, you're operating, you're actually working in it. That's an habit. Do you know that if you put yourself and say, I will not die like a mere person, and you cannot do it, you cannot die mere. Huh? Do you know that? If you say you're going to die like a mere person, trust me, you'll die like a dog. Haven't you seen rich people? who are very rich but die like dogs. Those that exhibit positivity, a habit will be what they are. When you exhibit that you cannot die young, you cannot die young. Yeah. Eh? When you exhibit, it is part of you that you are rich. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, you read it home. Build a winning team. If you have not created a team of people who win, look for people who always want to win and be their friend. Put yourself in people who have achieved and make it your team. Praise the Lord. Because what you will be conversing, you will be conversing 
conversations of winners, not conversations of losers. Eh? So build yourself. If for you to be great, make yourself a winning team. Look for winners. Winners. Don't look for losers. Uh, even the losers should look for winners. Eh? Losers don't look for losers. Look for winners. Look for those who are wise and walk with them. Be with them. Be with people who think, see something, and when they see something, they see a solution. They, they don't see a problem, but they see something coming out of it. Those are the people you should look for. The last one. The last one, First Peter 4, verses 10. First Peter 4, let's read this one. First Peter 4, verses 10. The Bible says, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards, stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do as of the ability which God giveth, the, the, that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus, whom we praise and dominion forever and evermore. Hallelujah. That's not the scripture I want. I don't know where it has gone. But as I conclude, live a life of service. Is it First Peter 4, 10 to 11 that talks about service? I'll get it in the evening and come and show us. But live a servanthood life. Live to serve people for greatness to come your way. If you see, most of the men of God who have reached a certain level, if you ask them, they have served certain men of God. They don't just come like that. Huh? Let me give you an, a story of Pastor Robert Kayanja. When Dr. T.L. Osborne came to Uganda, there was, there was too much sunshine for the man of God. And the white man said, the sun is too hot. The man of God were just looking at Dr. T.L. Osborne. People were just looking, 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 looking. Pastor Robert Kayanja went and bought an umbrella. Wherever the man goes, Pastor Robert is like this. Pastor Robert is like this. Then Dr. T.L. Osborne said, from today onwards, you will be as great as more than I am. So servanthood brings greatness. Yeah? If you don't want to serve people, no one will ever serve you. Let me tell you, no one will ever serve you. So if you want to be great, serve people. Whether God has given you 10 billion, you earn. Live a servanthood life. Serve people. Jesus was a servant. Jesus lived his life, all the three lives, three years, serving men. Serving men. You remember when he met the lady and the lady was wiping the, the, the hair with, with oil, cleaning the legs of Jesus. The lady knew that if I do this, I know my master. I'm not only doing it because he's so big. But I want to serve my master. I want to serve him. Because when I serve him, there is something greater. I'll be greater. Hallelujah. Jesus knew Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a thief. But the way Jesus stayed with Zacchaeus, he never at one point pinpointed at him that you were a thief. Huh? But because he kept on serving, kept on being, moving together. Then one day, as Jesus was passing, Zacchaeus went and on the tree and stood. Jesus said, come down. Zachariah said, me, a thief, me. Okay, let's come to my house. He went and fed Jesus, served him. A thief served Jesus in his house. And from today, Zachariah said, I'll, re I'll return all the money I've stolen from people because I've served the master. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Rando si braga la